fresh mics. That fresh mic smell. Anyway. Digression again. You're getting too intoxicated off it. You're forgetting what you're doing. Do what you do, but I mean, like your passion. What you... I'm a metaphysical philosopher, bitches. No, I can say it now. Good. Okay. Welcome back to the A to Z podcast. I'm your host, Zach Hampson, and this is my co-host. Avalon Breen. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's good. <laughs> that, okay, that's the official intro for now and unto eternity. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say now and to forever. I decided to start a podcast. <laughs> oh, so we're just going to dive into it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, everybody's here now. They're like, what, what the fuck's this? Okay. So, yes, you're right in assuming it is in the title. This is a podcast. And, yes, this is probably going to be like a weekly weekly occurrence. It sounds yeah. about right. Um, so, I've kind of wanted to do a little podcast for a while. And then I also enjoy... Uh, the talks I have with my beautiful fiance here, <laughs> and um, yeah, I thought it'd be a great idea to just combine the two, and we can make some good content out of it. You know, I guess let's start a podcast. Is today's uh, '90s? Let's start a band. I guess equivalent. Um, so we're just doing that. Um, we're calling it A to Z, not because it's just our initials, but <laughs> because we want to cover. A whole range of topics um, from A to Z, or A to Z, however yeah. we say it's a it nice here. double entendre. Oh. oh. <laughs> um, we can cover stuff like that. Yeah. If you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, let me just start with, you know, what my passion is and, and like, what I love and what I do with my life here. <laughs> As you can see, we're in my studio, so... That's why you see a lot of paintings in the background here. Um, these are all my paintings. Uh, everybody who's watching this probably already follows this anyways. If, but if you are new, uh, I am an artist. And what I do uh, is I like to paint landscapes and I like to paint portraiture. And not only do I like to paint and stuff, I like to um, draw. And um, yeah, so that's what I just I love. And that's why I just, just keep doing what i do doing because I just love it so much. <laughs> what about you? Yes, well, I guess those that already know me and those, well, those that don't, anyway, this is more for them. Um, me, I guess I'd say that my passion is combination between philosophy and poetry. Um, some people that probably follow me on my Instagram could see that I was would post just some little musings or excerpts from, um, yeah, just, just the stuff that I think or the poetry or the things that I just like to write. And like Zach was saying before, he was inspired to make, you know, this podcast, I guess, as a combination between our conversations and also yeah. because I think you have a lot to talk about as well. So <laughs> I think that would be pretty good. But in the same... Um, Measure, I, I kind of usually have a lot to talk about or to say. People <laughs> in the past have, have always kind of said that, I guess, about me, that I talk a lot. When I talk about deep stuff, though, not like superficial, shallow things. Clearly. Yeah, sure. Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, you can yeah. attest to that. No, I can't. Yeah, can. no. Yeah. So, yeah, I I guess that's why I jumped on the bandwagon with Zach to, <laughs> to do this. But um, yeah. hopefully, ideally, through, even though we're quite young, we can still provide some unique insight or, I think, takeaways, yeah. Yeah. hopefully, can bring. I think that would be the best thing or this, the ideal that this, you know, podcast well, could do. I want it to actually bring real value to people, not just us talking, because every, yeah. everyone in the world could start a podcast easily. You know, what's mm. what's going to make the difference is, you know, um, stuff that you, that people resonate with or inspires people or strikes a chord with others because anyone could just sit here and talk about whatever and mm -hmm. record it nowadays. So. Well, it's interesting that you said we're young. I mean, 
We are, I guess. We're 22, for those of you who don't know. Uh, yeah, so it's funny that you said that we are young. Um, I mean, by today's standards, we, we're young for sure. But, um, you know, take it back a thousand years ago. And, you know, if you were 14, 13, you were a man. And you'd be starting the family and you'd, you'd have already left your house. And you'd be... I don't know, doing a trade, doing your something agriculturally or something to do with your hands or stuff like that, you know, even at that young and then you'd probably be having kids by the, definitely by the time you're 17 or you might be on your way to having your second or third kid by then, you know. So I feel like that, you know, the, the, the age doesn't negate much if at, if at all anything, um, so with that being said (laughs) i don't feel i feel like i've never lived my life uh around whatever age seems to be you know placed upon me that that year despite the age uh, (laughs) the age grouping that we're in we're pretty like confident and have strong convictions and Weather and I think a lot of people just don't even really think about that. Mm. Just get caught up in the in the trap of working nine to five oh God, till the day they die. There it is. <laughs> it's already <laughs> hit. It's already hit it. Hasn't That's a big thing that oh, that geez. I like to talk about. In case yeah, that's what he's hinting at. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I don't see it so much as a trap, as as. You know, as it is... As your counterpart. Well, as it as it is a trap, I don't like to, to view... It. I, I You know, there's two ways you can look at a, a not-so-good situation, you know, where whether you view it as, you know, something that is just... It just inherently bad, or you can view it as something, you know, you can use to your advantage... And I choose to use see it as something as you can use to your advantage because yeah, you know having a nine to five pays for a lot of my materials and sh- and, and you know pays for booking workshop spaces and stuff like that so I can have workshops and stuff like that. Mm. So you know it's, it's, there's two sides of it. I know I'm not negating like I know you know that that fact, but I feel like if you don't have that level of self awareness, that's how it becomes. That's the whole point of what's so insidious about it. And that's when it really does yeah, become a, a trap is that people have been kind of, I think, geared or conditioned to actually believe that's mm. the ideal that you should be working, you know, just 100%. kind of that well, industrial era yes. that just forced that upon that still continues and that the school system operates from. You well, know? that's really good that you said that because that kind of ties in what we were saying in the beginning about the um the age sort of thing is is that we're led to believe that being 22 means you don't have to grow up and stuff like that so it's it's that social engineering towards you know towards gearing you towards you know being being reckless and then paying for your recklessness by doing the easy path which is just going about whatever it is the school system sort of shuffles you into you know what i mean and and the societal norms of of that system, which is like the really easy path to take. Mm. So I feel like that, yeah, that that all ties in c- completely with with the whole um, idea of allowing someone to be uh, in this mindset of of yeah, I am young. That means I have no responsibilities. When there is another alternative mindset which they could adopt, which is the complete opposite. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. on yeah. that note. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, did you want to talk about, you know, maybe a little bit behind the reason you find, because Avalon is a poet and a philosopher, you know, a little bit behind, you know, why you are so passionate about those things, you know, why is it that you find those things so... Um. I think that's so, a, really, a really hard question because it's. I think it's the same as asking, you know, <laughs> why your favorite ice cream ice cream flavor is chocolate as opposed to vanilla. 
you know, I don't think a lot yes. of people can really explain that. You could you could give, I'm sure, some reasonings that you've always maybe liked chocolate or can tie that into, you know, um, maybe like childhood memories or other things. But I feel like it doesn't really come down to logical, deductive kind of reasoning. I feel like when it's passions, yeah. it's something that can like obviously can be fostered through probably childhood and exposure to it and you know there are probably different reasonings on top of that but i feel like the primary basis of a passion is not you know like based in any sort of sense yeah. of logic yeah in any sense of logic that's that's what i think well, <laughs> well you're assuming that logic is real <laughs> okay let's not is get logic into that real? anyway <laughs> <laughs> but i i guess if if we're going to talk about why i and passionate or have affinity for both the things that you mentioned, namely poetry and philosophy. Yes. Um, <laughs> I think I think they tie in clearly, obviously, so well together. Philosophy just ties in with everything for one. But mm-hmm. philosophy, okay, we'll go. We'll start first with that. Um, well, <laughs> always when I was young, I felt like my whole life, I've always kind of naturally, I guess you could say, been. I don't know, why does this just sound cocky or gay? It it comes off as, I don't know, gay. But considered myself probably more so a deep thinker because I've always just, always contemplating like a bigger, grander meaning of life. I've never kind of been one of those people that's never been aware of the absolute just unfathomable depth of this existence. And so Mm. that's always just been a huge curiosity of mine to learn about you know real truthful truthful elements of this universe i i could never i was never someone that would just i don't know could just be ignorant of all the just indescribable forces at play in the universe so Mm. clearly i think having that that mindset from such a young age and a very like inquisitive nature and and towards the later years of my life, I started to really value the accumulation of knowledge. I mm. thought it was just so natural to gravitate and I just mag- magnetise towards yeah. philosophy because philosophy is just about, you know, um, you know, the discipline that's uncovering the existence of reality so i don't think you can get (laughs) you can get pretty much deeper than that (laughs) yeah well i would i would say that you know at first your passion isn't grounded in anything well how'd you put it isn't not logical it's not logical yeah yet i would say that you know the more you do it the more time you you have to logical reasons yeah about you know why it is you do what you do yeah you know yeah and in my last video, which it titled, Why Do You Paint? You can uh, watch that and find out why I do paint. Yes. I was going to say, so you don't even need to, uh, we don't even need to ask him that question. Just go watch that video <laughs> as a total separate thing. We no. We just skip over Zach. No. Because he'll just repe- be repeating himself. I just, I have a burning desire to paint and I, I can't do anything else but paint. Ignites my soul. <laughs> On fire. <laughs> That's what I meant. A blaze. No. no A um, blaze. A no, but honestly, though, I've had plenty of time to think about it. You know, I mean, p- painting just uh, in itself is just a, in, in one way or another, I suppose, is just kind of puts you in a meditative trance in a lot of ways, I feel, um, when you do it long enough and for, for over many years you sort of when you get when you pick up the paintbrush and you start painting you sort of get into this rhythm uh and space where you're just thinking about nothing but the 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 action of painting and stuff like that because you've done it so often it becomes intuitive and it becomes like breathing and then it allows your head to be really open and free to think about a whole range of different things so um I've had a lot of time to sort of rationalize why it is I do why what I do and you know it I guess you could say logically it's because I love what I do but then again to tie in with what you were saying illogically it's because I can't 
like my body won't let me do anything else like well not my like body but opposite. my spirit i feel like wouldn't Would logically that, you know if your body can't do anything else and then that's know, illogically that, love because wouldn't you yeah. say that love is the more illogical abstract notion there as opposed to <laughs> being physically feeling physically you yes. know enabled to not do something i felt like they were yeah maybe a bit reverse there but i know oh, what you well, mean fair I, enough. I get what you mean yeah well Aren't they both abstract? They're both abstract, definitely. <laughs> Let's not get into that. <laughs> but love is Everybody clearly, gets a I think, most for people what will. This podcast is going to turn into. <laughs> They're just like, is this a podcast? Is this a podcast? What is a podcast? What is words? <laughs> What's these sounds out of our mouths? What does it mean? What's the meaning of life? <sighs> Nothing. <laughs> I choose nihilism. Oh, good. <laughs> Um, I don't, by the way. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> um, but anyway, interesting school of thought there. Oh my god! <laughs> You'll go <laughs> tag in. <laughs> no, but um, obviously, in future episodes, we'll have a more constructed sort of talking points and things like that. This is just yeah. the first initial episode where we're just, you know, touch touching base with everybody here, uh, with you guys, and talking, um, talking back and forth, maybe. Just filling in a couple blanks that some people might have coming into this podcast and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> we'll probably do like focus the podcast around topics and stuff like that. Yeah, um, definitely. And then, you know, we, we'd we like to have a, a couple of guests on in the future. I think that'd be really cool. Yeah, um, I think that'd be really good. Yeah, obvi- obviously I'd like, you know, I think the range of topics and stuff like that. Uh, What we'll be talking about will probably stem from like our viewpoints in life and that'll come from obviously Avalon being very centered around philosophy and and poetry and then myself being very centered around uh, art and painting and my artistic practice and stuff like that. Um. And then also, you know, probably a lot of the teachings that we've both read combined and stuff like that, that'll mm. come that'll come into play yeah. with a lot of the topics and stuff that we're going to yeah. talk about. But well, yeah. We're both pretty avid readers, so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, me personally, I've consumed uh, just inconceivable amount of self-development books. Weird flex, but okay. It's true, though. <laughs> <laughs> so... I mean, <laughs> no, yeah. I can't even. If anyone wants to talk about that with me, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, we'll definitely I'm be talking about down. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Well, more recently, I suppose I've been c- consuming a lot more. Um, I guess when I was a kid, I grew up wanting to be an archaeologist, and all through school, I'd loved ancient civilizations, and uh, and pretty recently, I've been. Um, listening to a lot of uh, podcasts to do with these uh, archaeologists and geologists uh, rediscovering ancient civilizations like pre pre ice age pre stuff like that pre ma- massive cat- uh, cataclysms and stuff like that like meteorites and frozen wastelands and all these things and just you know how we're a species of amnesia so yeah, those those are the things that you know we'll probably cover as well. <laughs> you know, yeah. I don't know things that we're just generally interested in. I feel like that's that's something that we'd be talk about. Yeah, which mm. I think is a very like wide variety of things. Yeah, that a lot of people, I think they like, but don't really engage in a lot of the conversation at the same time. How do you mean? Well. Like I said in the beginning, like me being drawn towards philosophy and naturally a deep thinker, I think naturally all of us are inherently deep spiritual beings. So we're drawn towards real meaning and fulfillment in life. But like you said, Mm. just then that you said we're a species of amnesia. I think that's like a perfect description. I think for everyone coming into life, we've just forgotten, you know, um, so much about our actual true nature. And this world is so filled with intense you know temptations and distractions that a lot of people just get so caught up in this three-dimensional plane and i think forget about 
you know the true nature of reality yeah and now uh, well yeah. that's yeah that's interesting you said that because looking back at all these ancient civilizations that you know i, I guess saying they're ancient civilizations sort of distance them from us but they're us they're us like you and me like there's evidence of like human beings that are completely like us homo sapien same structure everything dating 200,000 years in the past and like something uh, one of the uh, geologists said was we've got rockets that you know go out of space and probes that land on different planets and stuff like that and that's all happened within the last 100 years and stuff like that and and to conceive that we've had such crazy strivings and like f- foot in front of the other in the last 5,000, 2,000 years to and then to see that we've lived nearly 200,000 years like what does that what does that mean like you, surely we've you know he, he put towards the question that we might have you know gone even far exceeded ex- far exceeded what we are now but mm. due to cataclysms unforeseen just been completely obliterated off the face of the earth but yeah, anyways, um, back to poetry and and um, art and stuff. <laughs> Bit of a slight digression. <laughs> that's there. the thing, though. That's that's really interesting about our viewpoints is that the only things that seem to last throughout the ages are the arts and is the poetry. You know, it's the words we speak and the stories we tell and mm. the pictures we have and the stories they tell. You know. Yeah. Yeah. The only things that are ever Im- immortal from these old civilizations is the things that we're interested in. You know, they never find, you know, uh, blueprints to the iPhone. You know, you wouldn't find that. Mm. You'd just find an iPhone. You'd be like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. (laughs) You know, Mm. but yeah, anyways. (laughs) I digress, (laughs) but anyways. (laughs) Clearly. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So what else? So w- is left to really say in this well I hope quite a bit we've only been going for 30 minutes 30 minutes how long are the podcast is usually supposed to be an hour really yeah damn I listen to podcasts some that are like 30 40 minutes and then some that are an hour fuck that I hate po- I listen to podcasts that go for like 3 hours yeah I listen to some yeah I don't know I like short snippy ones but then I do like I wish oh that one went longer just depends on the type of podcast yeah true very true I mean they can be very boring and rambling yeah some I just feel like they're just reiterating the point too much how this one's probably going to be like the first one yeah well this is the first one like I said it's just the getting the gist of it you know yeah this is the first time doing a podcast this is the first time me even like filming myself talking in front of yeah a camera oh yeah so. true but we've both been on a podcast before yeah we've the been shout on out a young people's podcast plug them in oh uh, lucky and jacob uh killing it <laughs> they they get to film themselves i think they should get on that yeah i reckon it'd be really good i like yeah. their setup I yeah think they should film it yeah I'll, I'll show them what we do here and, and then yeah they'll probably do Something similar, yeah, but yeah, yeah they're, they're good. They're miles they're good. ahead of us, anyways. Yeah, <laughs> they got a lot of guests as well. Um, yeah, well, they got a good thing happening there, that's for sure. Maybe, maybe to um pick up a little bit before we even turned on the mics here. Uh, we were talking about a few things, um, to do with uh, I suppose, money and 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 the monetary values that we put on ourselves and and on the idea of success um i i listen to a lot of gary v and, and i really believe in um what he's trying to do which is change the idea of success from being a millionaire to being happiness so that's kind of my general like one liner sort of idea about the whole idea of 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 money and I, I, I mean, it's, I don't think it's a bad thing at all. I think it's just a really good, useful tool uh, that you can utilize to just, you know, fund your passions, I suppose, and and, and give to the world, I suppose, like we were talking about before. But mm. yeah, so run us back. What was it that you we were kind of talking about that you wanted to sort of, you know, if you could give some advice on some things, or maybe some things, some highlights of what we were talking about. Yeah. 
Um, well, I think basically the main takeaways of what we were talking about beforehand, it's by no means, I feel like, original <laughs> knowledge. <laughs> yeah. But I think yeah. that's the funny thing. I think well, about what is? common, but common knowledge is never usually common practice, which I yeah. think is, is yeah. really interesting to think about. And mm. I think it's quite evident through, you know, so many so many millionaires and I'm sure there's so many people that every, that someone knows in their life who actually is, say, successful monetarily or mm. financially and you probably like, wow, why aren't they happy, you know, or you think of, you know, they have the money and that's something that in society we've placed the ultimate value on, mm. that that's the thing to strive for, that's the thing that's going to make us happy because we can exchange that, you know, in order to get happiness. Yeah. when we think that the money just equates happiness and money and happiness are kind of like synonymous, I think, with each other. Mm. But people don't actually realize that they don't they don't actually want money. They want the feeling, you know, they'll get that they think money will bring them, which everyone wants if you want to get boil it down is, you know, happiness and, and joy and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which which, you know, yeah. is true. But I think a lot of people don't don't realise that in their head as mm. that money is just a means to an end and when yeah, i think always. what we were talking about which was interesting what well, i was mostly saying that yeah. i listen to a lot of like spiritually orientated podcasts and i mm. listen to a hell of a lot of tony robbins and i've read a lot yes. of tony robbins as well i'm sure there's so many people that know about him if you don't definitely listen to his podcast but um <laughs> yeah anyway everything that i said the podcast that i've been listening to lately it's funny how they have you know self-made and self-created their financial abundance and financial freedom and success coming from such a scarcity mindset and mind frame and and they did that but even they themselves would would always say how when they get the money and it could be money you know that in their previous job they would make in five years and they could make it in you know a matter of three days and how they said they didn't feel the slightest bit different and here they were thinking for years gearing towards getting and accumulating all this money they were so shocked to realize they don't even feel slightly different some of them still felt incredibly depressed and they realized that wow money doesn't give you the happiness the happiness is your job that's up to you which is a daily practice there's nothing you know that's there's nothing external that's ever going to sustain that because happiness can't be bought it can't be procured it can't be externally gained in that way but so much of our society and culture has thought that it is something that is outside of yourself yeah which is just the norm yeah 100 percent 100 percent yeah, I don't think there's much I can add to that at all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could you could talk about it, I'm sure, more. That was a little bit of a whistle there. <laughs> it's weird. But um, in depth, but yeah, like really, I think that's the main um, basis or, or takeaway is, is that money does is not well, synonymous yeah. with, with happiness. But we all kind of think... Because once we have everyone, I'm sure once you meet everyone, they're like, oh, I wish, you know, I'd have more money. And, and of course, like, like you said, money, though, isn't to be, I think, demonized or inherently yeah. bad. It, it's nothing. It's completely neutral. Like you said, it's just a tool. And, yeah. it's, and it's more a reflection of the person, you know, when they get money, what they do with it. And oh, like you said, yeah. it heightens or amplifies who amplifies they are who inside. They are. Yeah. You know, if they are a selfish, um, self-absorbed person, you mm. know, or superficial person, if they're a person that's incredibly giving, incredibly loving, mm. compassionate, money just, like you said, speeds up that process to revealing the true nature of yeah. the person. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We How you put it amplifies is probably the best way to put mm. it. I think this ties in really well with um, what we were talking about in the beginning to do with you know, the whole idea of, um, I suppose, the society nor- societal norms of, of, I suppose, that are put into us through schooling, I suppose, and then and then just through society in general, through the grapevine and um, things of that nature is just, 
you know, if you don't have a well-paying job, which school teaches you is what you need to su- be successful, and what you need is just to go through and get a, get a good working job or be in a good financial security and you know it's all it's all about finance and 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 money and the acquisition of wealth and stuff like that and and people never really um you know people smile and nod when they see you doing um you know something that you're really passionate about and 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 you know stuff that you really love to do but more often than not you know people you know they're like yeah yeah that's that's cool and all but you know what what do you actually do you know what, what is there something that you do that contributes to off. society yeah well yeah. i think people just think <laughs> well even for me when i did uh for instance went for my bachelor of arts and did a philosophy degree mm. everyone in the world you could imagine was basically like why would you do that what job can you get out of that what career what's you know exactly again what's the means to an end what's the payoff what's the bigger reason instead of we all everything we do it's never for the intrinsic value it's always for this secondary you know value yeah like no one is actually doing the things that they love i did that because yeah. i valued knowledge and i valued the actual insight that philosophy gained which has probably changed my life and the way that I live my life because of the different perspectives that it's opened me up to but in other people's eyes you know it's it's a waste of time because why would you do something that doesn't bring you money you have to be doing exactly. something that brings you money exactly yeah so everyone would just you know and kind of laugh and downplay it like you said the funny thing is when everybody's dead and gone all people remember the stories we tell and the pictures people have painted and no one's gonna you can't take your money into the afterlife that's yeah not gonna mean anything at the end of your days exactly exactly but it's ironic how we all live that way i think a lot of people yeah. they like to slightly acknowledge it and think oh yeah money isn't the be or end all but does anyone really live their life in alignment to that truth true yeah no they just get you know a job that they don't like that doesn't fulfill them they work five days a week then they use that money to just get blind on the weekend and just repeat the cycle yeah i just know way too many people like that that's why i'm saying this and i think that's a frightening reality of our society yeah i agree i think there's a lot of statistics and evidence to back that up as well yeah 100 percent Hundred percent. Yeah, Gary V talks about that a lot. He talks about how um, you know, people get money to you know they acquire large amounts of wealth to spend it on shit they don't like to impress. Uh, on shit they you know don't like to impress people. They don't like. They don't that. give a fuck about. Yeah, exactly. They don't even care about. You know. Uh, he puts it in a good way. I can't remember how mm. he puts it. But it's something along those lines. Just paraphrasing. Yeah, paraphrasing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's it's 100% that, you know. It it all comes down with that nature-nurture thing. And I feel like our nature's there, but the nurture has just been lost to time, I suppose, and into the whole idea of... Um, the way the world is now, the way we've structured schooling, the, the nurturing part of it is just not in line with our nature. And and we're really putting these things, you know, facing at each other instead of, you know, seeing what it is that, you know, makes people like really happy to wake up in the morning, you know. And if you're not happy to wake up in the morning, what's, what's the point, man? I know. Well, you're just continuing... To survive, you're not ever really Yeah, living. it's just survival. It's and just, that's what I mean. Wasn't yeah. there, I'm pretty sure, a statistics done that people, I'm pretty sure, there's on Monday on Mondays have 30%, there's a 30% <laughs> increase of people having heart attacks from the stress <laughs> of going back to work every week. So most Fuck. people are that afraid and stressed out to start their, wording, their working week again that the stress is actually killing people. And that's like, <clears throat> you know, worldwide. And yeah. people just think this is, this is normal, you know, living. 
to be yep. compl- to be on edge, to be stressed about going back to work, and you know, just to live and to pay bills and and yeah. stuff like that. And everyone's like, "Well, you got to pay bills. Well, you got to have a house, and you got to have this stuff." And it's because people are just so. The biggest thing that I think people are valuing or overvaluing is security. Everyone just wants security <laughs> that bad that they're sacrificing yeah. all these more important, timeless, significant things of their life. 100%. And they're giving away portions of their life for money and we'll yeah. never get that time back. Time is the yeah. most invaluable resource. I know some people have heard me say that mm. before and I said that on the Young People's Podcast and I, I really mean that and I think that's so yeah. incredibly true that our time is finite. It's a finite resource resource. And we all mm. act as though money will always come around. Like you said, you can always get another shitty job. You can always get money. Money is mm. always circling around, you know, but you will never get your time back in your life. You have a numbered yeah. amount of days. If we were meant to die tomorrow, which we don't know when we're destined to die, but that's mm. already, you know, faded. What are you doing with your life in between? How are you spending it? Are you spending it <clears> to just exactly go to uni, to go to work, to impress people, just to... To what? Like to yeah, what end? But we've got to be careful with the way that we, f- w- w- the way we pose this is, you know, a lot of people can be like, well, you know, I don't know when my time is, so then I might as well just live it up, you know. I, I'm oh, no, not, you can I'm, go <laughs> either way. Yeah, I'm not proposing that, you know, you live. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I'm not proposing that either. I'm not you know, advocating reckless, for that lifestyle. Not recklessly, but you know, live recklessly, but don't live in a way that. Uh, is also meaningless but on the other end of the spectrum you know there's um i think you talked about how <clears throat> i don't know anything about this i just know that you said yeah. one time about tony robbins saying that people live for pleasure and pain or something like that no he said that we're governed you know well, yeah. a lot of people say that you know we're obviously governed by two masters and people yep. want to get the maximum of pleasure and the complete avoidance of, of pain you yep. know which is just a natural kind yep. of inherent thing in us yeah exactly so that's yeah. what i mean is is you know the other end of the spectrum is you're just you're like oh well fucking everything else is suffering i might as well just go complete pleasure you know, and just yeah. You know, I'm not advocating for a completely <coughs> hedonistic, yeah. traditional hedonistic yeah. lifestyle. Yeah, but what I, I am that at all. what I am advocating for is you know, people doing some serious inner work, mm. connecting with their nature, realizing mm. that the nurturing that they've been brought up with doesn't align, pretty much 99% of the time, never aligns with their na- with their nature, and re- and once you've realized your your, your nature and, and I suppose your passion for whatever that may be or for or for you know whomever you might be you know mm. you that's what i'm advocating that you you go live for mm. not for just instant gratification but yeah. obviously you know sitting in my studio and, and painting pictures all the time there's a lot of work and it's a lot of <laughs> a lot of time sunk into it but it, i'm doing that because i'm i'm in touch with my nature i'm in touch with like what I believe is what I am and mm. what I love and what I'm passionate about. But yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I believe that too. I'm not definitely not advocating for a hedonistic, constant, you know, self gratification lifestyle. I've seen, I've seen definitely a lot of people live that way and it is uh, awful and most of them are miserable and using it as a form of escapism. I feel like the best indication your kind of internal compass is. Whenever you're doing something that, you know, there's just an external gratification or an external kind of validation, I think you've gone wrong, you know, there. Whether it's yeah. good or bad, you know, the only basis should be exactly like live your life in accordance to yourself and how you make yourself feel on the inside, not oh, I'm going to take these drugs because I know it's going to make me feel good, so I'm just going to keep doing that. You're still relying mm. on some external source outside of yourself to give yourself that inner feeling, which just isn't sustainable at all. It's a completely transient thing, which life itself is transient. But, you know, mm. I think, like you said, just realigning yourself with your true nature, recognizing your true nature as a human being, 
and finding your way back to that. Yeah, hundred percent. I think that's a really good point to leave it at for this podcast. So. But yeah, so I feel like what we'll be covering in, in the rest of these podcasts going forward. It's kind it, of like a small, I think. Yeah, snippet show. of like yeah, the snippet. way that yeah, the things we, we talk of, about and, and the things that we believe as well, I suppose. Yeah. You know, that all comes part of it as well. Um but yeah. Yeah. Did you have anything else to add to that or No, I think I think you summarized it pretty well. Yeah. I yeah, I think that all came together pretty nicely. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was good. Um but yeah, I I we'd love to hear from you guys in the comments down below uh letting us know some things that we could talk about and some people you'd like to see on this podcast as well maybe well, we talk about or, or no like you said i think yeah it'd, it'd be really great to have like guests and you know to talk about their own passions and stuff i think it's you know would be really great but something you know if people want to ask us specifically stuff as well where we're pretty I guess we could say pretty knowledgeable and confident. Me being philosophy, yeah. You know, you in art, um, yeah. If they want to talk, ask us about some self improvement. I guess, yeah. Lifestyle, um, yeah. Hundred percent. Things like that. Because I've got a few questions lined up that I think we could talk about. Could be really, really good. Yeah. But yeah, just keep adding to the list. That'd be fantastic. And um, yeah. Yeah. Other yeah. than that, I'm gonna try and put this out on pretty much most of the general po- podcast sectors that people listen to podcasts on. Yeah. I mainly just listen to podcasts on YouTube and just sometimes Spotify, mainly just YouTube. I use Spotify. And yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes YouTube, but for me, it's Spotify. Yeah. For me, it's YouTube. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, otherwise, uh, thank you guys for listening to us. Please uh, like the video if you're on YouTube. Um hit follow if you're on spotify i don't know what the other platforms do uh, but do what they do and that'd be fantastic and uh leave us some feedback in the comments below here on the youtube video and we'll um try and just approve upon it and make this the best sort of podcast we can possibly do and uh, going forward I, I feel like we could really make a really good um space and something really positive for people to have in their ears um weekly to listen to is really good space for people to come into and uh, probably get some really good insights and perspective and positivity and you know really bring us back to to that um the right sense of the nurture that uh brings us back to our true nature that you know yeah that like we were talking about in the beginning here yeah yeah cool awesome <laughs>